do the research. You have to sit down and talk to a lot of people, uh, find a lot of sites, see people's interactions online. You get that information from there and you're going to find there are a lot of things people need you had no idea about, but you get to discover that because you've done the research. Are you a consulting business owner seeking a better way to scale to your next million in revenue? Accelerate Sales Podcast features other experts who have cracked the code to predictable revenues with proven sales systems that quickly increase revenue and get you on the fast track back to doing what you do best. Now let's accelerate your sales with today's episode. Welcome to the Accelerate Sales Podcast. Great to have you here. If you're a first-time listener or watcher, welcome. And if you love the show, please subscribe. And if you're a regular, I always love to get a iTunes review from you. That would be absolutely wonderful. And obviously share it to the people that you think could best get value from it within your audience. So there is always the opportunity to take notes and that's up to you but we do transcribe the uh, episode as well so all the links everything that our guest mentions will be in there so what are the key things you're going to learn from this show one is you're going to learn why and how to launch a podcast to help you accelerate your sales the second is the three-step formula to getting your content right so that it becomes engaging. And the third thing is some really, I thought, uh, tips on research that really blew my mind and they'll blow your mind as well. So today's guest works really, really hard to help coaches and consultants to launch their podcasts and use that as a great way to fill their sales pipeline. So what I'll do now is hand you over to David Perez from audiencecoach.com. Welcome, David Perez from Audience Coach to the Accelerate Sales Podcast. Great to have you here, David. Thank you very much for having me, Paul. Now, where in the world are you coming from today? I am based in Cali, Colombia, South America, a place, a city that is always hot and sunny. <laughs> well, that would be a delight. We're in the middle of winter here in Melbourne, and I can tell you uh, we've got a little bit of sun today as I look out the window, but uh, yeah, it's definitely not hot. But I've got a lot of team that uh, based in uh, Colombia, and I love Colombians, so great to have you on. So why don't we kick off with, um, you know, who are the perfect clients for you to work with? Uh, for me, the perfect client, Paul, is the one who has a long-term mindset. Uh, you always have people who come with the idea of getting things done very quickly and getting results overnight and uh, getting a lot of leads and getting a lot of money just with le the least effort possible. And it's not like that. I like clients who know that long term is the way to go when you are when you are generating leads and, and, and selling things and who also are clear about Selling uh, is about connecting with people. So you can think of people as transactions. Okay, I just come to you and I try to sell something to you. Or you are a person with whom I want to establish a relationship, get to know you the best I can, get to understand you the best I can. And from that, I can offer you something that I can provide, can be a product or a service that I know is going to serve you and is going to work for the, 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 the needs you have because I've done the work of connecting with you and understanding you. Right. And, and how do you go about knowing that someone, you know, because a lot of people say they're that way, but that's not always the way they operate. How do you sort of work that out with your clients? Uh, there, Okay. One way is just at the very beginning of the conversations we get to have. Sometimes uh, it shows that they are looking for a quick fix or a quick solution to their sales situations. Uh, you, you get to know like the, the kind of information they provide or the kind of questions they ask. For example, uh, I do podcast production. So somebody's uh, asked me uh, before starting like the, her first show, when will she or when who, would he be available to sell the podcast to a major platform? So without any previous experience on podcasting. So this is something that like gives you an, info, like, an yeah. idea that the person is looking for a quick fix or a quick solution to make money. Uh, the other thing is, and, and this is something I always do, I research my clients, I check what they do, and I see how much they've invested in the business they have and in, in the process they have. So I go, I check if they have a blog, 
if they have uh, the, in, in the social media, what kind of content they're creating, how often they create content, um, for how long they've been posting new stuff there. So that shows me that uh, that that shows me if either uh, that shows me either they are focused on just doing one thing and trying to get solutions from that one thing, or if they're focused on processes. So I do kind of kind of the two things: uh, listen to them in the first conversation and stalk them a little bit. Yeah, and and look, I think that's the value of having a podcast, right? Which we'll get yeah. more into in a moment. Is that you know we're all stalkers these days. So you know, gone are the days where you go and have a coffee with someone and. You know, yeah. it's um, you know that that world's uh, very much uh, changed. So you know, it is now the virtual coffee's on LinkedIn predominantly, and you know, people are looking at you. And uh, I think you know, so often I ask when people reach out to me, I say, "So how did you come across me? Was it through my podcast? Was it through some of the content that I do?" And most people say my podcast. And as yes. a podcaster, you know, and you know that you know. It's very hard to know who's listening, right? The analytics yeah. and the data isn't there. But, you know, people are, and it's a way of, like, knowing and trusting you. And I know that you work with a lot of business coaches. And, you know, what are some of the key problems that they're looking for you to help them solve when they come and uh, want to launch a podcast? Uh, there are two sides of it. One is the technical side, and the other is the content side. Uh, in terms of the technical side, I mean, they are experts in their own areas, but maybe they have never used a podcasting microphone or they've never used a camera or they don't know how to set up a podcast show on uh, Libsyn or Podbean or any other of these platforms. So uh, it's mainly helping them not to be, and this is going to sound funny, but it's true, not, not to be scared of the tech. Sometimes this is intimidating. Yeah. Being in front of a mic, using the gear, knowing how to use the gear properly, sounding professional, it's something that concerns them a lot. So I, I guide them through that process of how to use the, the gear properly and how to sound professional. Uh, the other side is the content side because sometimes they have a lot of ideas to express, but they are not sure they are going to be the right fit for the audience, if they are going to be attractive for the audience, uh, if they are going to match the audience's needs. So I help them with identifying, first of all, what the audience uh, is like. Okay, define that audience persona or ideal audience, or, or it, it, it has different names. And then mapping out what potential topics can be. Of course, we go through our research, we go through, through uh, like blogs and books and social media, like trying to get information from what people are saying around different topics. And from that, we create some potential uh, topics that we can cover on the show. So that that makes it a little bit, uh, um, that makes an idea of what we do for, for them, the tech yeah. side and the content side. Great. And and let's break those two up. So first on the, the tech side, I, I know that, um, you know, my biggest learning has been that, uh, you know, just start somewhere, right? So if I look at the setup yes. and thank you for complimenting me on my new camera, but you know, I was audio to begin with, and it was audio with, you know, a mic. This this is a great road mic, which road is, you know, uh, Australian made. So yes. I, I've, <laughs> I've gone with them. And, uh, you know, it, it uh, I forget what it cost me, but it was like about $150 or something. I don't think it's got much better, and I got the kit with it, and that's been the same that I've used for three years, right? So mm -hmm. that hasn't changed. I know for me, my voice has certainly improved, but the mic hasn't. So, you know, mic, like you said, sound quality is so important. Yeah. What's what's your advice? Uh, you're the expert. I'm giving you my experience from, you know, yes. in a podcaster. But, yeah, tell me about mics and uh, and how people should go about that. Yes, absolutely. Uh, thing is, if you're a consultant, you need to look professional. You need to sound professional. Uh, if you have an office, for example, you are not going to have like a shabby office with like dirty carpets or like a, a, a crappy <laughs> desks, you know, like it would make you look bad. So if you're not going to do that with your office, what would you do it with your uh, content production? In this case, a podcast. So uh, there are many people who think uh, just recording with their phones or with the laptops, laptops is good enough. Uh, and it is. To begin with, because, I mean, having the proper gear should not be a burden for you to get started, but eventually you need to, to gradually step up on the quality that you are generating. So that's going to be um, showing how professional you are. Like you are investing on the quality of your product and you care about your audience and you care about, about 
um, what you're giving to them. On the other side, Paul, and this is very important, audio quality directly influences engagement. Yeah. Poor audio quality will hardly generate engagement. People will disconnect from the content and from the message very easily. If the audio quality is good, it's easier to hear and to understand the message so people are going to be more connected. This doesn't, this doesn't happen on audio only. It even happens on video. Uh, there have been tests where people are giving a video with good image and bad audio and they get disconnected easily. However, people get a video with uh, great audio and bad image and they stay tuned. So audio quality is a very important factor for you to connect with your audience. Yeah, so true. And uh, to be honest, uh, I've got on some great podcasts as a guest just yes. from saying to, you know, you know, predominant podcasters say, hey, I'm not, I'm not quite sure if you knew, but the audio in this particular part or this particular episode wasn't to the quality that you normally have, just letting you know. Because, yes. you know, I don't go back and listen to all my podcasts and, um, you know, I'm sure they're the same, right, and especially the prolific guys. And, uh, yeah, it really makes a massive difference. And, you know, just on that, um, you know, like I've got a, a fairly small uh, office that I recorded, but you know, um, sound. You know, you see some people that have got their their whole room with padding. So you know, how much does uh, a, you know, a, like a, you know, let's say a mid range mic, which might be you know anywhere around a hundred dollars. How much does a pa padding make uh, and soundproofing, I suppose, make to the quality of the audio? Okay, uh, you can spend as much as you want because it tends to get very expensive i think that the cheapest part of the whole setup is uh, the microphone and, and like the actually the recording gear yes uh soundproofing and sound treating is the expensive side what i recommend uh paul in this case is to save like in order to save on this kind of sound treatment uh i i have some sound treatment like it's not visible in the frame right now but yes. there is some sound treatment in the room is to get a dynamic microphone. Like yours is a dynamic microphone. Yes, mine is a dynamic microphone, which yes. is uh, that like there are two two main types of microphones. Ones are dynamic, and the other uh, the others are condenser microphones. There are others, okay. But the thing with condenser microphones is that they are designed for studio settings, which means it's all quiet. There is no echo and there is no reverberation. What happens is in real life, in our home offices, at our homes, we don't have those conditions. So yes. a, a condenser mic is not ideal. The best example, the most common example of a condenser microphone is the Blue Yeti. I know everybody knows it. Uh, it's very popular because it, like, it has a fancy shape. It's a great microphone, of course. I'm not saying, it, I'm not saying it's bad, but maybe it's not the best one if you're doing uh, creating a podcast for the first time. Dynamic microphones like yours or mine are used for stage performance. That means they are great at rejecting echo, reverberation, and noise. So you have to be, you have to be very close. If you move away from the mic, you're going to lose uh, volume, a lot of volume. Yes. So yeah. they are designed. Yeah, well, like uh, a quick example, David, is like you know I'll, I'll have even my. Um, uh, my daughter or my son may have a shower in the upstairs bed uh, bathroom next to me, uh -huh. right? and I can hear it, and I can hear the pipes, and it drives me insane. And I'll say to the yeah. person on the podcast, "Can you hear that?" And they're like, "No, I yeah. can't hear it." Yeah, yeah, that's right. So it, it because it's because it's designed for noisy environments. So that's why. I recommend always as a first microphone, you should get a dynamic microphone. It's gonna have it's gonna save you a lot of headaches and it's gonna save you a lot of money because you will not need to spend a lot of like money on, on padding or acoustic treatment. It will help, of course, you can do like add it afterwards, but to begin with, it will be it won't be necessary. Just the mic will do a, a lot of the job. Yeah, that's great advice. And and I think you know, to to get to the content and then talk about how it can help us with sales. Is I think the most important thing is to do the least amount of work as possible. So what do I mean? Make sure that you've got someone else editing your podcast. Now, that is correct. I know some people are more technically inclined and maybe if you come from that background, that's great. But if you're a business coach, 
if you're a consultant, you know, please work on what you're best on and, you know, just focus on, on that and get someone else to do the rest. Now, as far as how do you find someone? So obviously, you know, David, you're a great resource, but, you know, if, if I'm just starting from scratch and I'm thinking, you know, how do I find someone to edit my shows? What's the best way that uh, people can go about doing that? Okay, so before I answer that question, I would like to add to the comment you just made, yeah, which is sure. uh, a podcast is a means to an end. This is something I always say, like, I think in, on every single interview and, and recording I, I make, I repeat the same thing. A podcast is a means to an end. It's not an end in itself. So you are creating a podcast, not for the sake of the podcast, but because you want to create an impact or you want to get a result from it. I say this because some people, now, we are, now that we're talking about editing, some people get obsessed about editing and over editing. They want to have the perfect sound, the perfect everything, like no arms, no ass. Like they want to sound like a professional radio host or someone who is reading a, uh, an audiobook. So they obsess so much over the quality of the episode that they forget that actually that's not the idea. The idea is that you are, you are generating an impact with this, with this product, with this piece of audio you have. So, Focus on getting the message across, not on getting like a perfect masterpiece or something that you will exhibit in a museum because that will hinder your actual way. Uh, as part of that, I will recommend, I always recommend that you get a part. Like we are speaking about podcasting for business. You should have an editor yeah. that takes care of the editing side, of course, like making sure the audio sounds great. But also that person will be uh, in capacity to troubleshoot because sometimes you have technical situations. iTunes sometimes gives you problems. Maybe you want to migrate from one podcasting host to another one. And like you have a lot of things to take care of. Adding that to your list is not a good idea. So it's good to have an expert in the area taking care of all these little details because like you should be focusing on your business not on these like tiny um, technical stuff, which another person can take care of easily because they are an expert in that area. Yeah, spot on. And look, you know, and we'll, that's why we'll talk about content now. And and your job and my job is to come up with the ideas, right? So that's mine. Yes. And then you have the behind the scene. And David will mention at the end, and I'll mention that he's got some brilliant resources to help you, uh, which um, will will definitely help from the technical side. So now on the content side, right? So, um, you know, what's what's the key things? If you had to say, you know, there's three key things that you need to consider when you're coming up with your content, what are those? Okay, let me think real quick. One one could be uh, get yourself out of the formula. And I'll go in, in, in depth on these in a moment. The other one could be research. And the other one could be uh, think long term. I think those will be the three key things when it comes to creating content for a business. So uh, the first thing is get yourself out of the formula. Uh, there is the ego uh, sometimes participating in the content creation, which is not very good because we start creating content about what we think is relevant or what we think is important or about what we like. When the act of creating content has nothing to do with us, it has everything to do with the audience. Uh, so that's going to be very important. Sometimes we think something is important. It has, it, I mean, it happens to me all the time. I have a co-host in my podcast and sometimes I say, oh, I don't think this is important. I don't think it's relevant. And he tells me, David, that's not important or relevant to you, but is it important to the audience? And how do you know right. that? Like, how do you know? Cause like I said, I've got lots of people that listened, you know, thousands mm -hmm. of downloads, uh, 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 a month, but you know, I, I don't know exactly who that is. Okay, that that is exactly the next step. Research, research. Do not assume what your uh, audience wants and needs. Okay, we are speaking about podcasting for businesses, not for entertainment. Entertainment has a lot of like uh, it has a lot of flexibility. Uh, you can go with different topics, different guests, but here we're podcasting for businesses, so we have to be sharp focused in terms of what we are talking about, what topics we're covering. Research is going to be very important. What we do is we set up what we call listening posts, Paul. And this is we find influencers or content creators 
that uh, cover uh, our content in the same industry. And we check all the comments in their social media posts, posts, all the comments on their YouTube videos, all the reactions there are. People uh, agreeing to stuff, people disagreeing, complaining. We take note of all that. This is real feedback we're getting in real, like very valuable topics we have. That's one thing you can do. Another listening post is just use uh, Google Forms and send surveys to your potential clients or to your current clients. And then you identify misconceptions, you identify uh, uh, pain points, you identify uh, common questions, and that helps a lot. And the other thing you can do for research is have conversations like you and I are doing right now with potential clients, uh, a, a, a previous clients or current clients and you get all this feedback from them and you get to find there are a lot of elements in common. So do the research. You have to sit down and talk to a lot of people, uh, find a lot of sites, see people's interactions online. You get that information from there and you're going to find a lot of times, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm uh, going too long with this answer, but you're going to find a lot of times there are a lot of things people need that you had no idea about. A lot of times there are a lot of things people need you had no idea about, but you get to discover that because you've done the research. Yeah, look, I think that's uh, really valuable. And, and that's a great point around people's uh, comments, et cetera, on their posts. And I've also mm -hmm. heard uh, that, you know, people's books, so influencers, uh, you go to their books and most importantly, you go to the, five stars but you also go to the one stars right yes. so yes i've heard that that's really good content and yeah i've got yes um, i use uh air table it doesn't really matter what you use but uh, every conversation i have i basically then log that as an idea not every conversation right but if a client i've just helped them with something they've got a question or in a sales yes. call i get a frequently asked question i'm like okay perfect that is going to be a great topic for a podcast and then I document them all and have them there ready for me. So that's the way that I do it. H how do you help people take, you know, that research and put it into to practice? Yes, absolutely. I always take notes of every single sales call I have. And then like sometimes from that, I get new information as to what topics or what things or what pain points I have identified. So, uh, and the other, uh, the third uh, key item that you asked me about. So the first one is get yourself out of the formula. Second one, do the research. You got to do your homework to get it right. And the third is think long term. We are building relationships. Sometimes new clients don't come out of the blue. They come because of a relationship, either direct relationship or, or because they have been referred to you by somebody. A great thing a podcast can do for you is, uh, well, well, there are several things. Give you exposure, but also help your network. There are there are some people I've interviewed or that have interviewed me that we have ended up doing business with. Or there are people uh, who have I have interviewed or have interviewed me that have referred me to other potential clients. And this is not something you do overnight because if you're thinking about the money in the transaction, like the, the, only that dollar sign is going to be there on your mind. But if you focus on the relationships, you're going to be focusing on how you can help people. And this will take like to, to build the basis for this somewhere between six to 12 months. It sounds like a lot of time, but it pays off. It absolutely pays off because it will help your business as well, because you're going to be all the time getting the information about what the market requires from you and from your services. So you're going to be always updated. Yeah. And, and you know, I'm assuming most of your clients have a product off, off the back of it, right? Mm -hmm. well, what's some advice on the best ways to introduce that product? I, I get the long-term relationship, right? But also, mm -hmm. you know, there's sales opportunities. So have you got any tips or any ways that you've seen your business um, uh, you know, business coaches or consultants leverage the podcast to then sell into a, a high ticket item or a, a service that they have. Absolutely. Well, first of all, you need to build the rapport and, and build the connection with the person by offering value and focus first or focus mainly on offering value. If you try to push the product or service, 
you're going to hush people away. You need to attract them with value. Then uh, there are different ways you can attract people to your product or service. One of them is by including uh, calls to action throughout the podcast episode. One call to action, for example, can be at the end in the outro section of the podcast. So there you can include a call to action. Also, you can include a mid roll, which is like a, a like an ad. It can be an ad, like similar to the radio ads, right in the middle, middle or at the beginning of the episode. And that will remind people that you are giving them value, but you are also a business and you can help them by offering or giving them uh, services or products. Yeah, and so I'm, I'm are- about to do a live ad roll at the moment. You know, for me, selfishly, one of the things I always uh, think is, well, where in the funnel should I send people? You know, should mm-hmm. I send them to the very top, which I'm going to do yes. in a moment, which is talking about my lead magnet and the, the pulse check? You know, do I send them directly to a, uh, a program? Like, what's your advice on where you send people in the funnel when you're doing those call to actions or the ad roll? Well, with, with the content creation environment we're in, a lot of people think everything is free and for like all, all the content you have to offer is for free. Uh, so it's good that you are clear from the very beginning that you are a business that you are not trying to trick people into coming to you and they try to push something to them that you want to sell them something out of the blue. It's fine that since they like the, since their very first support approach to you, they are aware that you are offering them value, but you're also a business. So like there is a potential business uh, business opportunity afterwards. So I will say you can not necessarily push, but like mention and and and, and show that you are a business and you have services to offer since the very beginning, since the awareness phase, uh, it, it's something that can be done. And of course, across all the other uh, steps of the funnel or the customer life cycle. Yeah, so so if you take you know me specifically, and uh, mm-hmm. sorry for everyone listening, but this is to help you. It's not just to help me. So I've got a, uh, a pulse check, which is effectively you know nine questions, Mm-hmm. And that they can fill in three minutes, and it's basically going through my key methodology and saying, Look, "This is okay. the framework you need to create a a sales system, right?" And then that goes to to a a call with me to go through a plan. So, am I best mm-hmm. to do that, or am I best to say, you know, if you want to work with me, you can go here to a, a you know to learn more at this application page. What from your mm-hmm. advice? What what do you recommend? Uh, I, I will recommend, like, uh, if you can easily implement both on your website, uh, it, okay. I think it's something that you can set up and 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 let it rest there, and it will do its job. Uh, I have both an application form like that works for me, uh, and I also have a lead magnet, which is not through a quiz in this case, but it's through online courses. We have a couple of online courses yeah. that we offer. And, and that helps me understand what people are looking for. And, and if they go to the course, that means they really need the information. But, if they are like in the- So do you mention both, David, in, in your podcast or do you mention one over the other? Uh, I focus on the courses. Okay. I focus on the courses mainly because they are getting something. On the application, they usually just get, like they provide information, but like they hardly ever get something yeah. back. Yes, but in the in the uh, with the courses, they are providing information, but they are getting a lot of value in exchange. So I always focus on on promoting that first. Great. Well, the the last question in this section is, you know, you've seen a lot of uh, business coaches, consultants, etc. What what are some of the things that are working best from them from a sales perspective at the moment? What what are some of the things that you're seeing mm-hmm. that us as listeners can can benefit from? Okay. Uh, from my experience, because I've I've uh, done the the exercise of of interviewing people on what's work what's working best for you. Uh, one of them uh, is of course what we're doing right now, which is creating content online that will give you exposure and that will give you authority and reputation that will make you visible. That's very important. And the other very important thing is having conversations, having one-to-one conversations, either on podcasts or on other channels or maybe on live events. But those one-on-one conversations really help you connect with people and attract more potential leads. Uh, it's not because I've, I've, I've done it myself, which 
I have, of course, but because yes. I've I've had a chance to speak with very successful content creators and very successful business owners. And they don't tell me about this big, huge structure like for, for uh, capturing a uh, hundred thousand leads or something like that. No, they focus on one-to-one -one conversations. Yeah, and I think that's uh, so important. Like you said, you know, roughly about 20% of my guests end up um, becoming clients or they have someone that they know that is referred. Yes. So I think that's really important. And if you're a business coach or a consultant, you know, you're, you're selling high ticket items, they're working with you. Yes, they're working with your team as well, right? But they're predominantly working with you. They want to know about you. And, and you're right, you don't need thousands of clients. You don't have a business model that could cope with thousands of clients. And I think, you know, a lot of people get lost in, you know, all these fancy funnels, et cetera. So I believe in having, you know, yeah. your funnel digitized in some way. So you've got to sell, you know, online, online, i.e. don't sell how you sell offline, online, because that doesn't work either. But I do think that a podcast is a brilliant way of um, reaching out to people to get that foot in the door. I, I mm -hmm. don't know many occasions that someone hasn't said yes to coming on the podcast, right? Because you're giving them a really valuable asset that they can share. You're giving them the opportunity to do, um, you know, to express themselves and they actually get better at expressing themselves. Uh, and also you get a huge benefit of you promoting the show on their behalf, like I will promote this show. So um, any other sales tips that you may have before we go into uh, the next section? Uh, I, I will think just maybe emphasize on that focus on on the one-on-one -on -one connections and the relationships not so much on the transaction because from one connection you have from a deep connection you have with a person like they can give you a lot of referrals they can give you a lot of leads from just investing on that one person so focus on yeah. on, per, on focus on people not so much on the transactions yeah great well and you know i've sort of talked about it before, but before we go into the rapid fire, I, I do talk about my pulse check. And I suppose it's been a good conversation with David around what's the best way. But this really does add value. It's, you know, I've had 28 years of sales experience, worked at, you know, the best sales company in the world, Coca Cola. And what I've done is distill that all down to nine questions so that you can work out what the gaps are. And then we'll have a call and we can talk through those gaps. So that's all it is. It's not a sales call in itself. It is a discovery call for you to see because a lot of you as a business coach or a consultant don't know what you don't know. You haven't had 28 years of sales experience like I have. So you know that's where I can help you fast track it. So we're going to go into the rapid fire section now. David, are you ready for that? I am ready, Paul. All right, fantastic. So the first question is, what are some daily sales habits that are essential for you? Oh, I, I like looking for problems. I like problems, Paul. Uh, I like listening to people and identifying their pain points. Uh, and I like when I find new pain points and I go then and, and try to learn new things, get new skills that will address those pain points in the future. Uh, because I think the best way to sell something is to to be able to the best way to sell or a good way to sell is to develop the skills to constantly adapt to the market. If a new pain point comes up, you're gonna be always there on top of it, being able to provide new solutions. All right, brilliant. So the next one is what technology is essential for helping you to accelerate your sales? Well, I am not very experienced in the part of a sales technology because uh, I am kind of new to to this area. I'm an expert more on the tech side, but I will say I will say um, build a content platform that you can have control over. Uh, like I'm 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 thinking about tech in terms of content platforms. Uh, social media, it's beautiful. You get a lot of exposure, but then an algorithm change can just blow yes. you off and make you invisible. So focus on building a platform such, an, uh, such as an, an email list or a podcast over which you have control. If you have social media, you have a thousand followers, but only 10 will see a new post. With a podcast, of a thousand subscribers, a thousand of them will get the notification that you have published a new episode. 
or same thing with the email list. A thousand of them are going to get that email to their inbox. So focus on a platform over which you have full control. All right, great. Well, we've got to really do these rapid fires to to get our listeners back into uh, their day-to-day. So the next one is, um, you know, your best source of sales tips. So how, like you said, you know, you're new to the technology of sales, not podcasting, mm-hmm. but, you know, what are the sources for you to, to learn more about sales? Uh, I think networking, networking, uh, it works both on people help me to get solutions to challenges I have in order to, to get more sales, uh, connecting with other professionals in other areas or, or other industries, not just inside your industry, but other industries, it, it helps a lot. And also, uh, networking helps a lot in terms of they referring people to you. I think this is a great tool connecting with other professionals in your industry or related industries. Brilliant. And uh, the last question is, how do you give back? Oh, this is something, I think this is my pending task for. This is the homework I still need to work on, uh, the thing I need to do. And and I'm working on that. Uh, I'm starting to create content. uh, Like I work mainly with health and wellness coaches, but now we're trying to give back by, by creating content that helps people in 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 some health and wellness uh, things they have, particularly mental health. So we are supporting right now. Uh, I'm working with a couple of coaches uh, that need to create content, so we are supporting them in that effort, so they can help people out with the knowledge they have. Okay, brilliant. It's still something very new, but I I uh, I need to. I definitely need to work on that really hard. Yeah, well, uh, you know, every step's a step or every step forward is a step in the right direction, as they say. So great to have you on the show, David. So you can, uh, as I said earlier, there's some brilliant resources that David's put together. So you can go to audiencecoach.com forward slash resources. He's got a checklist of exactly how to start a podcast. He's got a great content planner there and so many other brilliant resources. And David practices what he preaches. So he talks about content first and getting content out. And that's exactly what David is. And my last thing is, please, if you are, the world does need another podcast. It needs another podcast that's got you in it, right? Because there's no other podcast out there that's got you in it. And if you want someone to help you bring that to life and make a a massive change to other people and yourself, like it has for me, uh, please reach out to David. So, David, wonderful to have you on the show today. It's been my pleasure, Paul. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed that interview with David and those tips around research, I think, were absolutely priceless. You know, look at your key influencers, and it doesn't have to just be for podcasts, right? You can do that for content as well. But why don't you move learning into action? So why don't you go and take an action and then go and let David know about it? today. You can contact him through all the links that are in the show notes. Also, as I've said, all the other links that he mentioned will be in there as well. And why don't you go and share one, 10 or 100 of your friends and network so that you can be the sales hero in their life. And if you want to know if you've got that system to get to your next million dollars in revenue, just go to paulhigginsmentoring.com forward slash Pulse, please take action to accelerate your sales. I'm fired up after today's episode. What about you? But hey, before you go, learning is just one piece of the puzzle. Now it's time to put today's strategy into action. Head over now to today's show page at paulhigginsmentoring.com forward slash podcast and share how you'll put it into action. Be sure to head over to your favorite podcast platform and subscribe, rate, and review the show. Tell me what your favorite episode is. And don't wait one minute more to gain access to your pulse check at paulhigginsmentoring.com. This could be the difference between struggling to get more leads and making this next quarter your best one yet.